What's going on everybody? Tim from Tierfon Orbital. So this is going to be a little bit longer uh, than my usual videos. Uh, so this is for a full custom build uh, from the Custom Saber Shop uh, and there's a lot to go over. Um, I have said it in a couple of my, la my previous videos. I have been all for custom one-off hilts lately. I, I really enjoy uh, not only like getting custom one-offs from you know folks like Nevin at Space Junk Sabers, but you know when a client does a full custom build like on you know in the custom saber shops hilt saber builder, or if they send me one of their one-offs that they've done, I just really enjoy getting something that is bespoke and unique to the owner, and this is definitely that. So the client reached out to me. I did a sale on my Etsy shop back in May for May the 4th and they snagged this client snagged an install spot back then with the intention of doing a full custom build uh, and then sending the hill to me for installation so it's been a little bit in the works for a while uh, so you know the client built his hilt uh, virtually uh, the, in the custom saber shop MHS builder got a general idea of what he wanted the hill to look like and then it went to the custom machine shop uh, at the custom saber shop so the custom saber shop the guys over you know Tim and everybody over at the custom saber shop are awesome they not only do they provide a great service for people who want to build their own lightsabers but if you've got something in mind that you want custom designed actually so yeah like I do I do a lot of my stuff, like some of my Koran builds are all custom parts that I will send off to. This is like a grip that I put on my Rev 2 or Rev 3 uh, with vents in it. So, you know, they're very, they will work with you. If you've got something within reason that they can machine on their equipment, they'll do it for you. And they're great. Uh, Tim is all, always uh, receptive to stuff that I want to do. So... The client wanted some custom parts for this hilt. They wanted a custom shroud. They wanted custom routing. So after they built this hilt in MHS, they contacted Custom Saber Shop and you know said I want they wanted some routing done um, and gave a general drawing on what they wanted the shroud to look like. And the guys at Custom Saber Shop did it, it and it came out really fantastic. When those parts were done, they then went to Starlight Sabers for etching, and Starlight did an absolutely phenomenal job etching this hilt. It looks phenomenal. Um, so, why don't we talk about it? Now, like I said, so there were some... <laughs> this is a curved hilt. This is a curved hilt, and I, um, I did say I would never do a curved hilt ever again. But luckily for, for me, this design in particular was not as difficult to install as I thought it was going to be. Um, with where the client chose to have the switches, um, it wasn't as difficult as some of the previous ones that I've done. And yeah, that's not without saying there were hurdles. There were definitely hurdles to get this thing installed, uh, but I think we accomplished uh, what, what we wanted to. So. I'm gonna talk about how to use the hilt. We will go top to bottom about what went into not only the design, but the chassis. I'll go over my chassis and then we'll put a blade in it. We'll do a demo, right? So here it is. So this is the custom hilt from the client. This is a full custom saber shop in, uh, build rather. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. I guess we'll start at the pommel, right? So. Pommel is actually, I think this is an MHS V1 pommel, and pommel has been etched. I mean, look at, I've been meaning to get into etching, but I, I think I should probably just leave it up to the pros. This looks phenomenal. The design's rad. It's, it's, just, it's just a great looking pommel. So pommel's been etched. We do have a 28 millimeter Smuggler's Outpost base elite speaker in here. Is this a base elite? No, it's a regular 28 millimeter Smuggler's Outpost speaker. So making our way up in this elbow section, I've got two brass tactile switches. They are in a dual tack aluminum switch housing. They're around the opposite side of that, I have a set screw. Now this set screw holds the P2 
PCB holder. I've got another PCB holder in here that makes a connection to the chassis. I'll go over all that when we open it up. Making our way up, so like I said, Custom Saver Shop will knurled, do knurled grips for you. And the grip has been knurled. This is an MHS V2 grip. So it steps down from MHS V1 to MHS V2. And we have a thin neck brass section here. So yeah, look, this shroud, this is the custom shroud that the client also sent to Custom Saver Shop for millwork and cutting. And I think Custom Saver Shop did an awesome job on this. I mean, the whole thing just looks so, so unique, right? The shroud has also been etched. And there also is, so the Custom Saver Shop does do custom machining as well. And the client wanted a window up top in the emitter here for an OLED. Now, this, this is part of the caveats that I was talking about with using the Sabre, and we'll go over this in a little bit. But there is an OLED here in the emitter section, and, and that's it. Making our way up top, we've got, I did do a custom blade plug for this order, uh, and that's it, right? So let's come back down. So I, I do want to talk about, <laughs> um, let's talk about the chassis first, right? So here is the chassis so here is the chassis right i like i mentioned this was a little intricate uh complicated build uh, i'm just going to say that up front um so to figure out how to make a connection to not only the speaker in that angled section but to continue my connections to get up into the emitter we had to do some craziness <laughs> okay so here is the chassis the chassis has pcbs on each end i've got a seven rail pcb up here and i've got a six rail pcb at the bottom the six rail pcb is for the three switch conductors and the two speaker conductors so both of those are in the pommel and they are modular on the chassis itself i do have room for a four 15 15 neopixel array this was from kim's cantina i actually have that laying around and needed a reason to use it and i put it in this chassis uh did my regular greebly work uh, along the chassis itself we have a battery tray here now for this particular build i did go with an, a 16 650 battery it's a skinnier battery gives us the same uh, 3.7 volt output uh, but it it worked really well with this particular build because we did have an MHS V2 grip to stick this whole thing in, right? So it gave me a little bit more play to, to work with the chassis itself. We've got a kill switch around back here. Up top, this seven rail PCB uh, connects to the rest of the top of the hilt. So I, need, I needed seven conductors. I needed three for my blade, data, positive, negative, and four for the OLED, which is in the emitter section. Now in the emitter section, I did make a small chassis as well. This chassis holds the OLED. Okay, the OLED is in here. And this is where my lit PCB emitter goes. That's from CC Sabres, right? So, all right. So let's talk about how to use this thing, right? So as I said, everything's modular. So to get at your chassis, to install your chassis, you wanna unscrew this pommel at the elbow. There's that PCB that I mentioned. That's for the speaker and the switches. I do have a brass pommel insert coming today. I will pop that in before I ship it back to you, the client. I've already got the chassis in here. So here's the chassis, okay? We've got PCBs on each end of the chassis. So to put your, your battery in, you wanna take your battery also to the client. I know that you don't have these, the 16 650s. I've got two of them. I'm going to send them with the hilt uh, when I ship it back to you. So you take your battery, flat part of the battery goes at the spring. Spring side is your negative. Then you want to hit your kill switch. You'll know you've got power when those NeoPixels light. Okay, so this is where it gets a little confusing. Well, not confusing, but um, we'll talk about that in a second. So you just put your chassis in. And then screw in your pommel. And then we'll get to that. Okay. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom. I wanna go over there. So there is a caveat with this OLED. All right. So I think, you know, I did mention this to the client. Unfortunately, right now, with Profi, 
Once you lose connectivity to an OLED, it will not automatically come back on. So typically when we see OLEDs, they are on the chassis and they are just like directly wired to the Profi. So they've always got power going to them in some form or fashion. Because this OLED is behind a PCB, every time that you disconnect the OLED from power, the Profi does not send a signal back to that OLED to turn it on. I've reached out to Frederick and uh, Brian Connor actually helped me out a little bit with this. It, Profi does not yet support the function to, to have a PCB, uh, an OLED behind a PCB yet. Uh, I, Frederick is always usually good with like taking suggestions. So I know that he'll probably figure out a solution to it. But for the time being, if you want to use this with the OLED, you really need to put the chassis in as soon as you turn it on. So as soon as you turn the chassis on, you pop it in and the screen comes on, right? If, if you don't put the chassis in within that like time frame, and the Profi sees that there's no OLED, even when you stick it in, the OLED won't come on. So I've gotten around that with putting the chassis in really quickly, right? The other caveat is, as soon as, you, as soon as you take your finger off the chassis and it comes off of those PCBs, you lose connectivity to the OLED. So you can use this screw as a set screw for the chassis. You just have to be very mindful of how the chassis is angled because there's a possibility that, like I don't want you tightening down a set screw onto the battery, you know what I mean? So you just make sure you're putting it in so that you're not gonna be tightening down the set screw on the battery or the board, uh, but that's really tricky. So just be very mindful of that. And again, the client is aware of, of the, you know, the, the caveats with, ha with having to do that. So I'm gonna try to do that on camera Okay, so it took me a couple times, but once you play around with it a little bit, just make sure you're not tightening down that set screw on the chassis itself. But there is the screen. Okay. At last we will have revenge. And each screen uh, is different with each font. Let's put a blade in it. So I'm, I did include a blade plug with this particular install. So you take your blade plug out. This top screw is going to serve as your blade retention screw. So just pop your blade down so it's resting on those PCB pins and tighten your set screw. So to the client, that is your custom sound font that you sent to me with your custom animated blade. Let's see what else we've got on here. I must be cautious wherever I go. So all the clashes work, it's just... So all your clashes work. Really, really, uh, really well balanced hilt. Uh, you know, I didn't think I'd like another curved hilt ever again, but uh, this changed my mind. Let's see what else we have on here. One more. At last, we will have revenge. Great, great hilt. Feels really good too. Well balanced. I think I said that already. Anyway, listen, to the client, thank you very much for trusting me with this build. I know it's been a long time coming, so I'm happy to finally send you a completed hilt. To the viewers, thank you very much for watching. If anyone has any questions about 
the build itself or anything at all, please don't be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always.